Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn about correlation and causation. These two concepts build off scatter plots and the line of best fit, which we covered in the previous video. So linear correlation is a measure of a linear relationship between two variables. We measure linear correlation using a correlation coefficient, which is r, to determine the strength of the relationship. A r value close to positive 1 indicates a positive correlation, close to negative 1 indicates a negative correlation, and close to 0 indicates no correlation. Okay, so to summarize this, linear correlation and the correlation coefficient tell us how strong of a linear relationship is exhibited by the data. So if we're looking at a scatter plot, how close are the data points to forming a perfect line? Positive 1 as a correlation coefficient means a perfect positive relation between the variables, so they are related by an increasing linear function. Okay, so R value of positive 1, correlation coefficient of positive 1 means the data points form a perfect line, and that line would have a positive slope. A R value of negative 1 means a perfect negative relation between the variables, so they are related by a decreasing linear function. So correlation coefficient of negative 1 means all the data points form a perfect line again, but this time that line has a negative slope. Then the complete absence of correlation is represented by a r value of 0. So if the correlation coefficient is 0, that means the points are completely random, and no linear relationship exists. Now, it's important to point out, if positive 1 is a perfect positive relation, and negative 1 is a perfect negative relation, then we can't get any values higher than 1 or less than negative 1. Right, so if we want to create an inequality, r is going to be some value between negative 1 and 1. Right, so this is an important idea when we're talking about the correlation coefficient. Now, to make more sense of what the correlation coefficient is and what it represents, let's look at a few scatter plots. Okay, so we have four scatter plots that represent positive correlation. Okay, so the correlation coefficient is a numeric value, gives us a number that represents how strong or weak the linear relationship is between the data. So if we start here, for this scatter plot, the correlation coefficient is 1. And we see if we were to draw the line of best fit, all the data points would fall on that line. So we'll call this perfect positive correlation. Now, moving one to the left, looking at that scatter plot, the data is linear. There's a strong linear relationship, but it's not perfect. And the correlation coefficient is 0 0.96. So we'll describe this as strong positive correlation. The next scatter plot is starting to get a little more spread out. If we drew the line of best fit, we'd have to estimate it based on the data. And the correlation coefficient is 0 0.58. So it's definitely not as strong here, but it's not weak. It's kind of in the middle. So we'll call this moderate positive correlation. And the last example, r equals 0 0.28. The points are definitely more spread out. So this we'll define as weak positive correlation. But the one thing they all have in common is if we were to draw in and estimate the line of best fit, for all four of these scatter plots, our line of best fit would have a positive slope, which is why they fall under the positive correlation category. Right? So the slope of the line of best fit will tell us the sign of the correlation. And then the value of the correlation, how close it is to positive 1 for these examples, tell us how strong, or in this case, how weak, that correlation is. As a rule of thumb, really 0 to 0.3 we consider weak, 0.3 to 0.7 would fall into that moderate case, 0.7 to 1, but not including 1, would be strong, and then a correlation coefficient of 1 would be perfect. And we can go through the same process for negative correlation. Okay, so we have four more scatter plots, and the correlation coefficient written beneath, you see it's the same as above, just negative, right? So in this case, this would be perfect negative correlation. This would be strong negative correlation. Moderate negative correlation. And weak negative 
correlation. And again, all four of these, if we were to draw in the line of best fit, each line would have a negative slope. So negative slope for the line of best fit means we have negative correlation. And then how close the correlation coefficient is to negative one for these examples, tell us how weak or how strong that linear relationship is. Okay, so this statistic is really helpful for us because when we create that line of best fit, it's a prediction based on the data. So it's helpful for us to know, well, is that going to be a strong prediction or is it going to be a weak prediction based on the data? And then we'll finish off with an example of no correlation. So this is a correlation coefficient of zero. We see how the points are pretty random. If I asked you to draw in a line of best fit, it would pretty much be guesswork. Uh, really, we'd have nowhere to start and not sure where to draw it. And then we could always have a scatter plot that has nonlinear correlation. For instance, if our scatter plot looks like this, well, a line or a linear relationship is probably not the best way to describe the data. Right? This would be parabolic. Right? A parabola would be a way better example or function to use to relate the data. And this one, again, linear probably wouldn't be the best choice. This we'd want to use some sort of exponential function to represent the data, right? So that they all are close to that curve. Okay, so these are some examples of nonlinear correlation that we could see. So what could be the approximate value of the correlation coefficient in the given scatter plot? Okay, so the first thing I notice is if we were to draw a line of best fit in, it would have a negative slope. So right away, I can cross off A and B. Since they're positive correlation values, that means that the line of best fit would have a positive slope. And now we have to decide, do we consider it moderate or strong? So I would say that this data set exhibits a pretty strong linear relationship. If we were to draw the line of best fit, the points would be pretty close. So negative 0.9 would be the best approximation for the correlation coefficient for this scatter plot. Which of the following correlation coefficients would indicate the strongest correlation between the data? Okay, so remember, correlation coefficient is between negative 1 and 1. Negative 1 being perfect negative, 1 being perfect positive. So to answer this question, we're looking for which value is closest to either negative 1 or 1. Okay, so looking at our choices, I see 0.9, but I also see negative 0 0.99. Well, this correlation coefficient is closer to negative 1 than 0.9 is to positive 1. So for that reason, D indicates the strongest linear correlation between a set of data. Sometimes with these multiple choice questions, they might give you a value that's larger than 1, like 1.2 or maybe negative 1.1. Hey, we can't be tricked into choosing those uh, answers because we need to know that the correlation coefficient has to be between negative one and one inclusive. So now, how do we find the correlation coefficient when we're creating a line of best fit or finding the equation for the line of best fit? So we can do that with our calculator. And in order to find the correlation coefficient with our calculator, we need to turn on diagnostics. So here are the steps to turning on diagnostics. The nice thing is once these are on, you shouldn't need to turn them on again unless your calculator resets. So I listed them out in case that happens, but let's turn them on. So I'm going to hit the second key up at the top left. And I'm going to hit zero, which is catalog. Now there's a whole list. So I could either scroll down till I get to diagnostic, save me a little bit of time if I hit X to the negative one key right here, which you'll see highlighted in red. I jump right to the letter D section. Now don't hold down the D pad because you're gonna scroll past it pretty quickly. Not sure what happened to my calculator there. Okay, we're back. Okay, so there we have diagnostic on. So I'm going to hit enter. Now that should read on your home screen, hit enter again, and it should say done. As long as you see this, then you have turned diagnostics on successfully. Okay, now let's see what that does. So determine the value of the correlation coefficient of the given data set round to the nearest thousandth. 
Okay, in order to find the correlation coefficient, we're going to find the linear regression equation. So the same way we did in the previous video. So we're going to hit stat, edit. So I need to clear out the list from last time. So scroll up to highlight, clear, and enter. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And for L2, we have 11, 20, 17, 22. Let's, let's try to get that back again. There we go. 28, 28, and 30. Okay, so we have the same number of entries. We're good there, so we're going to hit stat. Scroll over to calc, choice four. Scroll down to calculate. Hit enter. And now what you'll notice is we have two additional pieces of information that we did not have in the previous video. So I'll bring that into our notes. So that's R squared and R. R squared is another statistic, but we're not going to deal with that in this course. We're focused on R, which is our correlation coefficient. So in this case, we're rounding to the nearest thousandth. So that's 0 0.9396. So rounded, R is 0 0.940. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that there's a strong, right? 0.94 is a strong value, positive correlation exhibited by this data. Okay, so we can tell all of that just by looking at the correlation coefficient. Notice the slope, right? A is 0.6, the slope is positive, correlation coefficient is positive, right? Those two things should always match. Caroline collected the following data on age and hours of screen time per week. So age across the top, hours of screen time right below. Write the linear regression equation that models the hours of screen time based on age. Round all values to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we're going to write the equation this time. So back to stat, edit, clear out the lists. Okay, so we have 18, 21, 25, 30, 33, 38, 42. And then for L2, we have 53, 50, 45, 38, 30, 27, and 20. Okay, so we have the same number of entries. Looks like I typed everything in correctly. Always want to double check that. Stat over to calc, choice four. Scroll down to calculate, hit enter. So there we have our values. I'll bring it into our notes. I'm going to have to cover some pieces here, but that's okay. All right, so write the linear regression equation. So they give us the format, slope intercept form, A and B, we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So that's Y equals negative 1.4X plus 78 point, no, so it'd be just 79.0, point zero, so we're to the tenth. What is the value of the correlation coefficient? So that's R, so R, equals zero, negative, 0 0.993. We'll round to the nearest thousand, just as we did in the last example. That's typically where we'll round. Sometimes we'll go to the hundredth though. What does this tell us about the data? Okay, so it's negative, and 0.993 means we have a pretty strong correlation. So there's a strong negative correlation 
exhibited by this data set. Now, can we say that the increasing of age causes the hours of screen time to go down? So is there a cause and effect? Well, in this case, the answer is no. Just because you get older doesn't mean you automatically have to stop using your phone as much. It just so happens that in this data set, that is what is exhibited, but it doesn't have to be that way. Now, this is important because a lot of people see a strong correlation coefficient and think that means there's a cause and effect, but they're completely separate ideas. Correlation just means if I look at the scatter plot, do the actual points represent a linear relationship? I don't care what the points represent, but do the points show a strong, weak, moderate, linear relationship? Cause and effect, that requires us to think. What are the data sets? And is there a reason that one would cause the other? So correlation determines if there is a relationship between two variables, as I just discussed. But just because two variables show linear correlation does not necessarily mean that one variable causes the other to occur. For that reason, we say correlation does not imply causation. Okay, so just because you get a correlation coefficient of 0.9999, that does not mean there's a cause and effect. There is a causal relation, not casual, causal relation, if one event is the result of the occurrence of the other event. So there's a cause and effect. So this is just thinking. So determine whether or not the following relationships can be described as causal. So the number of miles ran and calories burned. Well, if you run more miles, your body's going to burn more energy and it's going to burn more calories. Okay, so yes, this is going to be a causal relationship. The number of bagels ate and a person's shoe size. Well, that has nothing to do with each other. Right? If you eat 10 bagels, you don't get a larger shoe size. Right? There's no relation between those two sets of data. Okay, so no. Age of a person and how many shirts they own. Again, there is no cause and effect here. Right? A younger person could have more shirts, an older person could have less shirts, older person could also have more shirts. Right? There's no cause and effect here. And the amount of houses sold by a realtor and how much commission they earn. Well, commission is how much money they make per sale. So if a realtor sells more houses, they're going to make more commission. So there is a causal relationship there. So again, notice we didn't use the calculator. We didn't find any correlation coefficient. We just looked at the two data sets and decided if one caused the other. Which of the following statements shows a relationship that is correlated, but not causal. Okay. So we're looking for correlated, but not causal. So the amount of time walking and distance covered. Well, it would make sense that those data points would form a linear relationship. And there's definitely a cause and effect there. You walk longer, you're going to cover more distance, right? You're not going to walk in place. The number of hours worked and how much money is made. Again, we would expect a linear relationship when plotting those data points. And there is a cause and effect. You work more, you're going to make more. Increase in the width of a rectangle and the area of the rectangle. Again, there's definitely correlation there. And there's going to be a cause and effect. If we increase the width, then the area is going to increase as well. And then the increase in daily temperature and the number of police cars driving around. Well, that might be correlated, right? More people are out, so maybe more police cars are out, but there's not a cause and effect, right? It doesn't hit 90 degrees and the police say, all right, there has to be 90 cars out. Okay, so this would be that choice. There is no cause and effect there. Peter is given a scatter plot and asked to approximate an equation for the line of best fit and the correlation coefficient. He approximates the line of best fit with the equation y equals negative 4x plus 11 and estimates the correlation coefficient to be r equals 0 0.9. If his equation for the line of best fit is correct, okay, so this is correct, got that right. Explain why his estimate for the correlation coefficient cannot be. Well, The line of best fit
has a negative slope, so the correlation coefficient correlation coefficient must be negative. Right? That's one of the first things we established when we were looking at those scatter plots. Right? When the correlation coefficient was negative, the line of best fit had a negative slope. Right? They always matched signs. Okay? So because his estimates, the line of best fit, he approximated with a negative slope, his correlation coefficient should have been approximated with a negative value. Okay? So that's why he cannot be correct with his correlation coefficient. It should be negative. Okay, so two big concepts covered here, correlation, and we also looked at how to find that with the calculator. We turned that diagnostic on, so now every time you run a linear regression, you're going to get that correlation coefficient as well. And then we talked about causation, which has nothing to do with correlation. It's just something that we look at the two data sets, and we need to decide and think critically whether there's a cause and effect relationship. Okay, so for both of these, you need to practice. Practice with the calculator for the correlation coefficient and see more examples to feel comfortable identifying that causal relationship. Click the Amazon link down below for my algebra workbook so you can practice on your own. Give the video a like and before you go, click that subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this. Thanks for watching.